Hello. Today I wanted to go through the flow of exporting an object out of Blender, bringing it into a way builder, creating a scene, and then creating a viewer in Flash Develop to show the scene inside your browser. Things you need are a bunch of things because that's a bunch of stuff. You can get Blender at Blender.org. It's a free modeling program. Way Tools has the Away Builder software, which we're going to use to export the Away 3D format scene, formatted scene. Um, you're going to want some skybox textures just because they make things look cooler. You're going to need the Away 3D core files. And of course you're going to need Flash Develop so we can compile all this stuff and make it happen. Okay, first off, what we're going to do is pop open Flash Develop. We're going to want to create a new project so we have a place to actually put our files. I'm going to create an AS3 project. I'm going to call it Away 3D scene viewer and we're going to go ahead and create a directory for this and while we're at it let's go ahead and go to the properties of this project and add the away 3d core libraries right on so here we are we got a blank project pretty much should be able to just compile and pop this open. It looks amazing. Okay, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and open Blender. Uh, the week before, I watched a few tutorials and created this a little plane object. Not a flat plane, but a flying plane. Though I don't think it could really fly. I'm going to export this as a OBJ. Let's go ahead and stick that into our 3D scene viewer. Let's create a new folder to put our working files. I'm going to call it work. And let's go ahead and export that. Alright, let's go ahead and open a Way Builder, which is a Flash application based on the Way 3D libraries, which does a lot of cool stuff. For instance, import objects which we're about to do so we're gonna go ahead go in and import that OBJ file and we have our plane it's not as cool looking as it was in blender but that's because it needs some help um, we can click on that give it an actual material texture and now it's got a color at least it's flat shaded but it's better than the default squares in order to see textures and colors in a 3d world you really need to have a light. So we're going to add a few lights. We're going to add a directional light which doesn't do anything. Well that's because it's not applied to the texture yet but we're still going to add it. And we're going to add a point light which you don't see anything happen there either but again it's not applied. And what we need to do to make it go there is a new light picker. This lets us group them and apply them to textures. So we got a group to light picker one, go back to the object, go back here, we pick the lighting, and we pick light picker one. And boom, we got shading, which is nice. Um, I want this to be more of a backlight behind the object. I'm going to give it a little, little something, something. Okay, so we have a plane. It's pretty cool, but not that cool. Let's uh, go ahead and do a couple more things to the scene. One of the cooler things we can do is add a skybox. It just got ten times cooler. A skybox is basically a cube that sits around your whole scene. And it can be textured. Right now the texture is the default texture, which is kind of sickening. So we'll go ahead and create a new texture. And now we need six textures. Where are we going to get those? Well, we can go back to that website I referred to earlier which has a whole bunch of textures um, for skyboxes. I'm going to go ahead and pick this one, the Mars one, because it has all six sides. Not all of them do. But it has a back, a bottom, a front, a left, a right, and a top. But a problem with these, let's go ahead and copy these over to here. You can see that they're 877 by 877, and they need to be a power of 2, like 1024, 512, 256, 120, all those things. 
we're gonna go ahead and bump them up to 1024 and I, uh, I already did this so we don't have to sit here and watch me run GIMP and resize everything I'm just gonna paste those in so now they're all 1024 and everybody will be happy so the only other hard part is knowing what's what. So positive x is actually the right side. So we're going to go out here. We're going to find the right one. And we should see it here. There it is. It's already starting to look like we're actually in a world and not just a computer. Um, so this is obviously going to be the left one. And there it is on the other side. Positive Y is actually the top. Uh, top. Look at that. It's filling in. So negative Y is going to be the bottom. Remember what I'm doing here. Um, bottom. And then all that's left now is positive Z and negative. Positive is the front. and negative is the back alright if it's all done right it should blend smoothly and now our plane is actually on Mars I suppose um, that's not quite everything though so we have lights we have a backdrop we have an object uh, we really need a camera unfortunately there's a version of a, uh, a way builder let you add cameras but you can't look through them so you're kind of setting your scene up blind uh, maybe I'll add that later but what's important is you understand what a camera is so cameras have a far plane which is the square out here anything past that is not going to get rendered in your scene and then they have a near plane which is a square right here anything that close isn't going to get rendered so you want whatever you want to see somewhere in between there uh, in that case I think we do have that we're gonna go ahead and maybe rotate our camera a little bit make it a little interesting a little more interesting I want to make sure though that so we should be able to see our plane it's there it's maybe kind of far away but whatever here's the cool part though we're gonna save this it's gonna save it as an AWD file which contains everything that contains the textures the model the lights the camera um, it just contains it all which is pretty nice and a pretty compact binary I'm gonna go ahead and stick that in our source folder and there we go all right let's go ahead and go back into flash develop and let's make sure our project set up right straight away I think I'm gonna go ahead and add a new folder here called assets to start putting in my assets let's pop open the properties um, you want to make sure you're on the latest version of flash because it ain't gonna work with the old versions I recommend going to 60 frames uh, a lot of these video cards can handle that just fine. SDK is fine. Class path build. Let's set up our post build command to copy our assets folder over. Let's do just an X copy from the project directory. Source assets to the output directory. Uh, assets. All subs. Don't ask me. Don't ask me. Okay, compiler options. Yeah, well, I think we're good. Um, let's go ahead and just make sure it still runs. All right, nice blink. Nothing. That's fine. All right, now let's create a class that represents the view, the AWD view. So we'll just go here, add new class. Uh, we'll put it in a package to keep things nice and neat. We'll call it AWD Viewer. Uh, based on sprites bam okay so that gives us this neat little file 
Um, rather than have you watch me type the code in, I already typed it in. And I'll just go over it. Uh, basically, extend sprite, I already saw that. There's three main variables in here. We have the view, which is what holds the 3D world. Uh, we have the loader, which is pretty cool. It parses different formats, 3DS, OBJ, and AWD, uh, into a format that's usable by the view. And then we're also keeping a reference to the camera of the view. Uh, when you first create this, it really doesn't do anything. There's no magic until we call the show by URL. Put in the path to the AWD file that we want to display. Uh, it's going to call the initialize. It's going to make a new view, add it to this playlist. And then we're also going to initialize the loader. We're going to tell it what to parse, in this case an AWD2 file. Um, create the loader and then we're listening for two different events. One is asset complete which is called every time an asset's parsed successfully such as a camera, a light, an object and then resource complete which is called when it's all said and done. So after the initialize we go ahead and call load on the loader and those events will start shooting off. So as each asset is completed we're going through and checking to see if it's a camera. If it is a camera, we're assigning it to our camera variable and then making it the camera used for the view. Pretty straightforward. If there's multiple cameras in the view, they're going to start overwriting each other, so you know, it's going to pick the last camera it parses. And when it's all done, it's going to go ahead and add the whole shebang to the scene inside the view and then render it pretty straightforward. I couldn't think of any way to make it any simpler. Let's go ahead. So here we're going to go ahead and create an AWD viewer. And then we want to add that to the display list. And then we want to call show by URL. Cool. Let's see if it runs. Perfect. We see our skybox. We see the effects of our lights. We're seeing through the camera and of course we see our object. Uh, pretty simple. Uh, not, not a whole lot to it.